，二零一三年十一月二日，莫卡托基金会举办了主题为“科学与权力，科学的权利”的沙龙活动。活动中，中德两国政治家探讨了学术类政治咨询在中国和欧洲存在的形式，并对科学在多大程度上能够影响政治决策、研究委托方对学术研究结果又会产生怎样的影响，以及在中德两国科学家与研究机构是如何影响公众舆论和政治决策等诸多问题进行了阐释和深入的探讨。Good afternoon, liebe Frau Besweder, liebe Kipping, lieber Herr Janning. Dear guests, it's wonderful to have you here on a, on a Saturday afternoon.、Um, let me say a few words about the Stiftung Mercato and why we're doing this kind of salon.、Uh, we are、uh, one of the largest private foundations in Germany, and one of our main activities is our China program.、Um, and We invest heavily into、uh, improving the relations between Germany and China and Europe and China because we think that this is an essential relationship、uh, in a globalized world. And our mission is to improve the understanding between Europe and China, between Germany and China. And we do that by an exchange, by an exchange of people and by an exchange of ideas. And that means that in the last years. 200 years, especially the influence of science on society, on politics and economics,、um, has grown in an incredible way. And、um, in a way, in Europe, science after the 18th century took the place of theology. It was a reverence, it's a legitimation for political decisions, and even a lot of great thinkers thought. That a society is functioning like nature, and you can find, like you, like you can find natural laws, you can find social laws, and when you know them, you can do everything you want to do. So these terms of sort of scientific socialism, we all know here, but also other like Darwinism, became a kind of philosophical base. Of political decision, and uh, 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 so the, one of the questions we want to talk about is how is the relationship between science and politics, and between science and society today? So, when we talk about the use of science, there are two brothers: one is called science and one is called德先生 The Der 先生就是民主 ，science 先生就是科学。都是从西方引进的。那么一直到现在为止，这两个力量一直是推动中国社会进步的最重要的力量。当然，中国的跟西方在对待科学这个问题上呢，是有所分歧的，有所不同的。因为我们这个传统文化里面确实没有严格意义上的近代的这个西方这种科学。所以现在我们讲到科学的时候呢，我们有三个方面的含义。一个含义呢，可以说是意识形态的，就是只要是科学的，就意味着是合理的，是正确的。这个含义呢，其实最初啊，也是来自于西方工业革命时期，因为那个时候西方工业革命时期科学的就是 scientific， 也就是合理的、正确的。比方说刚才提到的，这阿克曼先生在这呃这。开场的时候提到的卡尔马克思，我们中国共产党这个马克思主义就来自你们德国的这位卡尔马克思先生，他就提出过一个科学共产主义、科学社会主义。其实那个是意义上讲科学，就是现在我们还在用的，就是合理的、正确的，这是一个含义。第二个含义呢，在在我们中国人讲呢，就是所谓科学的呢，是知识论的含义。就是从知识学这个角度来讲，什么是科学呢？就是是关于专业的学问和知识体系，它包括社会科学和自然科学。所以我们讲到科学的时候，广义的讲，不光是自然科学，还有社会科学，它是一种专业的学问。
大学里面有自然科学的院护系，也有社会科学的院护系。我们还有第三个行业，第三个行业呢是生活意义上的。生活意义上的科学呢，比较狭义的，通常呢是讲的是讲的是科学技术。啊，我们一般的普通的老百姓来讲，哎，科学通常就是讲的是就是比较狭义的自然科学和技术。Karl Marx had the idea. That you know, scientific communism was also based on the objective laws of social development. A very powerful idea, a very powerful idea that reached far beyond Marxism itself.、Uh, we've seen,、uh, you know, when Francis Fukuyama wrote about the end of history, he was very much influenced by the notion. Of sort of a linear development、uh, of society and of human thinking about society, about a limited set of options that would, as Marx、uh, had established, would be in a dialectical tension, and at some point would reach a solution. Now, and I think this has to do with this、uh, skepticism that I mentioned earlier. Now we come to the understanding. That the op- number of options might be far greater. There might not be a, even an objective limit to the options, but the limit would be our imagination to think society. And as our imagination, our creativity expands, also the options to understand uh, uh, the modes of our living、uh, would change. The German Parliament, for example, has、uh, had for years、uh, a very intensive effort to assess, at an early stage, the implications of modern technology. The outcome of which is that now, continuously, politics will seek to monitor the implications of technological change on society. But at least we have understood. That it would be wise and useful if we tried to understand as early as possible. There always is a regulatory gap. No, there always is a gap between、um, social, technological, and economic development and political,、um, normative, legal development. It is not politics. That is ahead of society,、uh, but rather politics mostly follows developments in society with a gap of probably around 20 to 30 years. I say that is quite all right because it keeps us from 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 becoming too hectic. But in the times that we live in now, where technological change. And scientific progress has accelerated so far. This can become a problem.、Uh, we are trying to understand the present with our understandings of the past, and regulate the present with our responses of the past. Not to even think about the future. No, I would not. I would not want、uh, a politics to to try to. To through、uh, legal means establish a future, I think it's quite all right that they march behind social and economic development, but they should be cautious of the fact、uh, that they should not fall too far behind it. You this observation is very right. We have a belief in science to the present, not only as a religion, but also from a certain point of view. 还有点迷信，认为科学呢能够解决许多问题，甚至可以说社会发展当中的所有重大的问题呢，都可以通过科学技术来解决。对不同科学的性质，不能够啊纯粹用科学技术的方法去解决。比方说，同样科学里面有自然科学和社会科学。我们这两年呢，把对对社会科学呢，也想对对自然科学呢去对对，所以我们这是我们又是一个中国特色。
就是我们自然科学刚才杨先生讲啊，有很多工程、营业。哎，我们现在中国的社会科学呢，也搞了很多工程，啊，也像自然科学、科学技术一样来组织。其实社会科学很大的意义上是要靠个性发扬发挥，给它一个非常宽松自由的环境，而不是说呢靠一个组织机构。我们现在的很多社会科学的这个研究课题。现在也是啊，通过很多团队，很大的一个团队，组织很多人，大家一起来叫做跟自然科学一样叫做公关，所以效果我觉得肯定不好。这还只是研究方面的。Philosophy as a science, as a scientific subject or a field of scientific research, is it not about what should be, but is about understanding what philosophers have thought and why they. Came to those conclusions. So, in, in, in that sense, Marx was one of those philosophers uh, whose ideas actually shook up the world. When it comes to the natural sciences, even though we speak about the scientific or industrial revolution, these sciences are rather affirmative. Science, scientific innovation, in that sense, and power go together rather well. And also today, Uh, a lot of the sciences uh, do not contradict uh, the political level, or do not contradict power, but rather go together very well. Researchers have to ask themselves, what do they do? Think of, think of the uh, moral dilemmas that people like Robert Oppenheimer felt, um, Heisenberg. Uh, and others felt who had developed uh, the, the groundwork for the nuclear bomb. Can you do something because it can be done? What we see about you know the digital espionage these days is very much you know science and technology off the hook. Is we do what we can do simply because we can do it, and that's why I think it is so important to always. Look for what's the impact on society. In the modern era, most social movements uh, have had a common feature. They have uh, raised their voices. They have they took to the streets to uh, encourage or force political actors to take a different decision. Today's Social movements want to establish a new reality. They want to establish alternative practice. And a lot of the use of technology, digital technology, in postmodern social movements, is about compensating uh, the privilege of power. There's there's a very significant uh, split in the way that that the interaction. Uh, between society and politics, uh, a politics that is empowered by technology. Now we have, you know, we have a postmodern segments of society also being empowered uh, by technology. Interact today that is clearly different uh, from from the patterns we have developed in the industrial age or in what we call the modern uh, age. Oftentimes, science. Particularly, natural sciences do not give you a clue. How do you move a society from practice A to practice B? Because uh, even the, the the best science, and even you know, having your scientists march up and down uh, uh, the the political floors, does not really give you a predefined answer or a ready-made answer. Uh, to this complicated process, change a society from one state、uh, to another. 权力的用刑呢，它要提供合法性，就是凭什么我来统治你？为什么你不能统治我？这叫做合法性。这个合法性是谁来制造的呢？这个合法性啊，通常是由学者来制造。包括
社会科学家和自然科学家。我想问一下，就是在咱们现在村一级的这个干部啊，已经很多年了进行直选，进行民民主的选举，但是在现在咱们大部分的这个老百姓的印象里头呢，仍然觉得村一级是比较混乱的一个单位，甚至说是在村长领导下呢，这个村民们好像。也算是一个最无法纪的一个群体，但是好像现在国家呢，政府还没有找到一个科学的管理村民的一个办法，好像还是仍然是靠市场去解决一些矛盾。我就想请教一下于主任啊，于于局长啊，谢谢。你到农村去看看，你会发现许多的问题。首先的问题是，西方，你们德国朋友，你们也经历过。会选。现在我们一些经济发达地区啊，跟西方一样竞选，你要竞选省长，我也要竞选省长，你一个班子，我一个班子，你一百万，我两百万，竞选经费，大家都会选，这个现象相当的，在在有些地方相当的严重，甚至于这富的地方给钱来来选票，甚至有些穷的地方。那他没钱怎么办呢？放一包烟啊，送一条毛巾啊，这全部地方他也算一些东西啊。我看到过最有有趣的一个例子，送一双鞋，你给我投一张票，我给你一双鞋。可是那个候选人呢，他一担心，万一我选你，你不给我投票怎么办呢？我我这个鞋不是白给你，所以他先给他一只鞋，说选完以后我再给你另另外一只鞋。这个事情就是。这个问题吧，就是会选，我们肯定要禁止。那我们的法律是不容许。我们中国呢，跟德国不一样，我们有两个头，政府一个头，党一个头，农村也一样。农村第一把手不是村长，是农村的党支部书记。所以呢，我们又就出现一个困境，就是叫做两委会的关系不和谐，就是村民选举，它的负面作用越来越大。如果不解决这些问题，那么村民自治，我们引以为自豪的村民自治这个基层民主的一个改革实践，它的有利的方面将越来越少，而负面的作用将越来越大。怎么办呢？有两个思路，一个思路呢，咱们干脆取消它，搞什么村民自治啊？农民管理素质就很差，你让他去搞选举。不是不行吗？什么就退了吧。另外一个思路呢，就是往前走，把它通过制度的改革的方式来完善基层的治理机构。在我看来呢，前面这个路是不通的，我们不可逆转，只能够往前走。怎么走呢？就是进基层治理体制的。改革，而且是突破性的改革。为什么要去贿选啊？要给十万块钱买一张选票，他买到以后是想拿到二十万。为什么能够这样呢？因为这个村长，因为这个支部书记，不光掌握到自治，就管理的权利，还掌握到经济的权利。所以我们应当把经济的权利给他剥离，把这个参与级的这个治理机构啊，做一个功能性的管理。政府的归政府，到乡镇去；村治村民的归村民，经济的归经济。这个改革已经势在必行。Can you continue to introduce elements of democracy and still keep open the question about the relationship between state and party? I think that's impossible in the long run. Everything we know from social science about sound, fair, and free democracies tells us that you need a functioning state organization, which essentially is a legal environment with a separation of powers and a judicial system that has no other task but to enforce the validity 
and implementation of the law. Everything we know, we only know for the time being because we don't know better. And we may not know better yet. You know, so also scientists should be humble. They should not believe that they've got the formula, that they've got the recipe, that they've got the means to save the world. And therefore, they should also have a say in ruling the world. But I think this is, this is what makes a good scientist. But it's not essentially different from what makes a good person in many other ways. A politician has to deal with the difficulty that a politician's communication will always be intentional. There is no such thing as unintentional communication in politics. As a politician, when you deal with society, you always deal with interpretations of reality. And you seek you know, kind of to communicate your interpretation uh, to uh, a wider audience. In the relationship between power and science, science has three tasks in a way. One is to give solutions. The second is to give advice. And the, uh, and the third, very important one, to give legitimation. Because today, it doesn't matter if it is a Western country or, uh, or, or China. Politics needs science to legitimize its decisions. Also, you use uh, 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 social scientific arguments and I'm quite sure every Chinese politician would also use scientific arguments to contradict you.